very nice to meet you miriam here if you have anything to discuss uh, to ask you can ask thank you it's very nice to be here Rachi, one question. Um, there are many satsangs out there, like there are many options to join satsangs, and there are so many definitions of satsang out there. My question is, what is, what is satsang with Rachi? And the the satsang which is shared, th uh, you know, uh, through me or or I, we can say, I share that the, the satsangs. Specifically, they have certain things, and they also contain that general thing, which is the general uh, offering of uh, every true satsang. No, also. So one thing about uh, true satsang is that. Although the focus of the satsang, true satsang, or focus of satsang is to live the truth, to to somehow support those who want to uh, live the truth of who we are and uh, know the truth of who we are, and yet somehow it doesn't try to so much, you know, um, limit uh, its. Uh, uh, expressions or approaches like it has very spontaneous and open and fresh uh, approach every time so in one sense um, every satsang is very complete and powerful in itself a opportunity is a powerful opportunity a fresh opportunity to live the same truth which is eternal which is beyond time also and that somehow makes it very useful for the seekers of truth who want to know the truth and uh, mm, live the truth. Meaning it is going to be very spontaneous in, in, in a way. Like looking at the same thing with fresh eyes every time. So this, this is something, one, one thing about, about satsang. Another thing is that it is not really an individual's uh, uh, desire to to share satsang the the one who apparently shares satsang is not really so much um, having its own personal desires or individual desires that hey i want to share satsang no but it is more the desire of the universal being to facilitate those beings who want to know the truth and do, they don't know yet and that, that 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 is what brings the beings together one being who is living and knowing the truth more naturally and simply without any techniques or mm, effort. Other beings who are ready to know, who want to know, who want to live and able to. And then that combination of the two type of beings together results in the most fresh and effective mm, delivery of what is shared and receiving and under understanding that also. No? So this is one general thing about satsang. Uh, which is very much applicable to the satsang vidraji also but what i noticed i'm just going to share with you that what i noticed so far in satsang vidraji happens is that um, there is a emphasis on on clarity more because unless the the mind becomes clear or or we the seeker become clear uh, about the basics of things, about the place from where we are desiring uh, the truth and uh, the place from where we start and uh, place where we go back also after every session, then then we will not be able to retain somehow the benefits of satsang so much. You know? So that clarity uh, helps us removing um, those things from our mind which are eating up a lot of our time and attention even uh, when we are in satsang and especially after satsang so they are not able to give us free time or 
and attention which we need to pay during the satsang and after the satsang to retain it to to multiply it inside our being so that it remain becomes permanent in a way permanent understanding and taste of being so this is why um, i noticed that this in, in the satsang with with me with raji uh, clarity we emphasize on clarity a lot like uh, i i for example don't feel like um like it happens sometimes that we do self inquiry the question who i am in different ways it is always asked it comes somewhere but what i found much more um, useful for the clarity not for discovery of truth that is that what do i want in this moment for example and that really can shake the being that we are off shake off uh, uh, the mind also so, so that we kind of can see that how what is the dust and what is the content the real thing inside my mind so clarity is one thing that uh, mm, that i uh, i find that focus happens uh, in the satsang and somehow the the magic of clarity is such that the more clear we become the more free we have become already from that about which we have become clear you know so clarity is something like a uh, mini awakening you know clarity is like a mini awakening like in a sp- small installment awakening is ha- happening and collectively it will be called realization of the truth of who we are at one point this by the way happens like this to everyone anyway it's just that i'm making it more systematic or more emphasized you know it it just get more emphasized emphasized in in the satsang with rajin that let us let us spend enough time to look for any blind spot that we have may might have rather than trying to see more clearly let us try to step back and see through what we are looking and is there anything mixed or uh, you know on my glasses if there any dust and 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 like this there, there could be a possibility that we are looking through the binocular and we are not aware or we are aware that we are looking through a binocular but the binocular binocular is inside out for example so if it can be corrected back then it can produce the right view for us for example so these connecting the dots you know is what is clarity and that ignites so much uh, inner wisdom that we we inherently have all the beings and then we have less confusions left less seeking required more we are able to be present no? and this is where the second ingredient of satsang with raji comes that is dhyan meditation meditation is uh, when i say i mean the fundamental meditation not the funda- meditation practices you know they are not meditation practices meditation cannot be practiced in general sense and yet we have to make effort no so what we do in meditation basically is, as i say that meditation is the way of the being way of being means like it's a way to live as the being as who we are truly all the time but not living you know so in meditation we learn somehow that very fundamental thing that cannot be done and yet something has to be done about it you know so we learn how, what is that something that we can do like we play our part so that the being that we are effortlessly can start revealing itself in our consciousness and in our experience so that we feel confident that it is true it is not a uh, philosophy only no like we get the taste of truth of what was spoken that i am the being that i am joyful that i am peaceful naturally and all this no so this is where the dhyan helps a lot so this dhyan is another thing that is the uh, most uh, important uh, 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 element of uh, satsang with raj always always we come back to dhyan in one way or the other or we start from dhyan um, often times in the in a meeting no because that's the only place from where we can really more clearly see and understand who or what we are and in relation to who or what we are what is mind and what is thoughts and what is body and what is the world also like the holistic picture no 
So thank you. I think uh, this is good for now. Very good. And Rachi, um, many people are joining your satsangs, and uh, um, and we are um, happy enough that we can also ask you questions in satsang. Um, these question and answers they seem like one one being is asking the other being. What shall the other beings do during that time? The question is how, like, how we can get benefited, like literally every second in satsang. <laughs> Either if you're talking to us, or if it's a sharing, or it's a meditation guiding. Thank you. I see. Oh. Mm. So, so there are going to be different scenarios, which I will try to cover in this, so that Everybody who comes in satsang can be benefited, no? In one way or the other. As, as I mentioned, that satsang is not really an individual offering. It is a, a desire of the soul, of life, one being of life, to transcend being an individual, and like this, to come home to who we are as the one being, no? And that uh, uh, opens many, many doors for us, uh, spontaneously every time. But as a, in the base, uh, there is always a vibration of being present in satsang because of our desire to wake up, to live the truth. And that vibration which is very silent and but very alive, that vibration can help everyone who is present in satsang. Even if they are not asking a question right now or discussing something or the, the answer which is being given is not relevant for them in the moment. Even then, they can live in the vibration of satsang. So there is something called vibration of satsang, which is actually a thing. We may think that uh, this is just a philosophy. No, if we give it a chance, that we start feeling like being soaked. Somehow we are being soaked. Like, like you know, some kind of uh, um, moisture is there, you know. It's not dry. Satsang is not dry, empty space. It's like a space full of some kind of beautiful, uh, you know, mm. Mm. Uh, juiciness or how to say divine fragrance or something no? like this. That is the presence of truth. That is uh, the presence of the being, one being of life. You know, so this is the amazing thing to notice, amazing, amazing thing to witness that the one being of life is present in satsang. Like in one sense you can say personally, <laughs> not that it has sent some representative or somebody. You know? And that is a very powerful thing. To, to meditate. So, you know, what is meditation? Connecting to the vibration of being, first of all. Because to stay as the being, to live as the being, we, we, we don't really, in the beginning, have so many so many handles, like so many uh, ways to, to come to. One way, which is the most simple, is to live the vibration of the being, which is present in satsang, for example. So, th like this, we already start coming to what we call dhyan. Like we, we are kind of getting acclimatized to how we will feel when we will come to our own being through dhyan, through our own decision, conscious decision also. And during the time when the guiding happens, that time this living of the vibration of satsang will help us a lot. So this is one universal thing like a, uh, for everyone. Another thing is when the guiding happens, that time, let us try to put aside as much as we can everything that we are doing. Even if it was something which was discussed in the same meeting also, same system also, even then, that we should try to put it put aside and join the guiding freshly, you know. Because the guiding is a much more powerful possibility than discussion, you know. Because in the guiding, it's not like we are being pushed to do something, but we are more being invited not even pulled. We are not pulled. We are just encouraged. And that encouragement gives us full freedom to remain as we want to remain. And it also gives us uh, a sense of direction and support to rise from the individual personal uh, mind or, or a state of consciousness to a higher state of being no? or consciousness. This is where we can 
we benefited so fast in very short period of time of let's say 10, 15, 20 minutes of guiding. Like we can get a taste of being. So that is a very powerful time. And most of the beings who join the satsang and join the guiding, they notice this. But still it makes us, uh, like I feel it is worth mentioning it again, that that is not the time for thinking or reconciling what has been shared so far or trying to digest that. No. Or what, I, what we have been thinking before coming to satsang also, this particular satsang. So this is another way where we can be so much more benefited. Meaning, guiding is not a time for thinking or understanding. Guiding is a time for living now, the truth. So the more we become prepared for living the truth now, the more we are able to kind of walk in the guiding together. Guiding is like a walking together. It will have its own, mm, you know, specific turns you know every every guiding will have turns like it will start from left let's go left a little bit then let's go right a little bit and then left and right and left and right and then maybe no now don't move you know it could be like this so all of that is not really pre-planned in the mind of the speaker but it is more delivered through the mind of the speaker body mind of the speaker but it is more cooked spontaneously in the moment in the being of life which is present in satsang, to so that everybody can be benefited in that very moment. And somehow, one more very beautiful thing that I kind of feel like mentioning about satsang is that what is shared in satsang is not really um, some kind of philosophical thing, but it is something like a response that comes for how, how every one of us is in the moment. So it's a very specific response coming from the, from the you know, being of life. And that's why it's very much for us, not for others. Like, so everybody who is present in satsang, this is for everyone, more or less. You know? But somehow it is not seen like this generally. We think that this question, this answer is not for me, this guiding is not for me. And we keep waiting mostly. We don't flow. This is also very important that we should flow in one way or the other, either in the vibration of satsang or in the guiding, walking together, or uh, another option is participating in an, some other way by talking, for example. But let us not sit in satsang so much. Like, let's say we were meditating before we came to satsang and we continue meditating the way we were there and we don't see any difference. Then we are not really present in satsang. As soon as we are in, uh, we are presenting satsang, we will notice some some difference, like this. Um, so participation in satsang in this way, active participation through talking uh, with me, also asking a question. It can be asked like you can ask a question, and you are happy with my response. You don't really want to talk back. Let's say so this is possibility. You just want to hear me. You know this is fine. And there is a possibility that you want to explore something in this very moment. You are ready to put aside everything for that. You know, like that kind of readiness sometimes is there, what I call exploration. Like a live exploration is also a possibility, which is a very powerful possibility. It's like the being of life has stopped for a moment. That let me see what is the truth right now. You know, it's a very powerful opportunity. And we can go for it when we are ready. You know? So I feel these are the, the, the benefits of satsang. Thank you so much. And besides satsangs, you're also sharing retreats. So uh, um, can you explain in a way what is the difference between satsang and the retreats and and the benefits. Thank you. Uh, in one sense, they are the same thing, but in another sense, they are not actually. So they are like um, retreat is a series of satsangs. No? So if I like, if we, we generally we can think that if I am joining one satsang, then, or I am joining five satsangs in a series, what can be a big difference? Actually, there are a lot of big differences. In the quality of satsang is not. Uh, there is no difference so much. 
in one sense there is a difference even in the quality of satsang also what happens is somehow that as soon as we commit we are the being everyone every participant who who joins satsang or the retreat is a being only there 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 is nobody there is nothing else which is living anywhere in every state it's just the being so as soon as all the being together in 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 retreat when when we commit for 5 days you know that commitment brings such power and which which creates such powerful opportunity that uh, uh, many many fundamental mm, mm, you know mm, fundamentals of spirituality are explored like the inspiration comes in the in me and in the participant to to look deeply into those things you know so because of this commitment first of all commitment has such power then second thing is that there are many many um, possibilities in satsang but they require commitment and continuity you know because something which is explored today requires another day to be re- to revisit it so that it can be digested well inside us and can become our own understanding and our own truth directly for that some time is required uh, surprisingly most of the time some time is required it cannot be really one day one type one time thing generally speaking can be some time exception but generally what is noticed is that continuity and commitment is very important commitment makes us more available in the moment for truth commitment for truth no? but continuity gives us a relax in a way that we are not so tensed that i have just this moment meaning one meeting of 2 hour so many beings joining and i am getting chance to just talk for few minute you know you can feel that naturally we feel stress that time that if i miss the chance to ask something i miss for one week let's say or maybe more but in the retreat it is not like this you you know that i have missed something maybe tomorrow i will ask and that relax which is happening at the on the background of commit, commitment no for to for to discovery no that somehow enables us brings us to such a appropriateness or wise state of being where we start asking the right questions we start taking home what is most valuable most significant than just asking you know question which looks like which is coming from restlessness no like we we start ignoring the restlessness or questions coming from restlessness we start connecting to our own restfulness and from there we start asking genuine um, important questions which really matter to us you know and then we benefit so much more by that also and the retreat is not just the retreat in the sense that 5 days or or 3 days or 2 days or like this in continuation but also there is a before retreat a preparation that is somehow given in some way to us no uh, which has which contains some videos or some understanding and and we also are going to start preparing so it 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 in itself it becomes such a powerful thing to prepare then to enter and to get maximum you know like this so in that way there is a big difference between a retreat and uh, as a whole between a retreat and a individual satsang there is a big difference but in each individual satsang anywhere and everywhere there is always a possibility but there are some practicalities of awakening also you know i am talking about that practicalities of awakening philosophically we can say that i can know that at one time and then i will never forget it but usually it doesn't happen that way so i am talking about the practicalities of uh, of awakening and uh, you know spirituality so in that way there is a big difference on the lines of practicality um i feel what is quite often reported is a certain cool down after satsang that we are having some beautiful two hours in the vibration of satsang and then we leave the room we the su meeting ends and somehow at one point we are losing this vibration of satsang and uh, i feel in the in the retreat maybe you can say a little about that as well that we stay longer in the vibration and we start the next day 
from a different point, then we would start the next Saturday. Yes. Uh, actually, this is what you are saying is true. Because generally, uh, we go very quickly, like we become very quickly, we, 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 we get cold, you know? like we lose that, by, uh, that temperature where, which we have touched, the height that we have touched uh, of consciousness in, in that particular meeting. Very quickly after that meeting, uh, our uh, activity, involvement with the practical life somehow pulls us back to a much, uh, sometimes even lower place than, than, than usual. Sometimes That's where we may feel a little bit, you know, like this. So it is true that during the retreat we will continue. And again, the commitment part comes again. Like in the back of the mind we know that I am committed to the retreat, so I am anyway going to be in the retreat tomorrow. And that somehow doesn't let us go back to the previous position. That somehow internally encourages us to kind of remain somewhere in between. Even then, even before attending the next meeting, next uh, satsang. And then next session comes. Like you already, we are like not gone so down. Like temperature has not gone so down. And then the next session happens. So already, that's what you mean that we we connect to the session more deeply after that, and then more deeply and more deeply like this. So this is definitely a benefit. There is one more benefit of it actually. That what happens is that. Either we don't succeed in satsang generally, we connect to the vibration of satsang only, which is fine. That doesn't have so much impact or that doesn't bring so much change in our way of looking or anything. No? But there are often time we will be able to actually connect to the truth that is being shared or the you know guiding that is being, being we, are, we are walking together. And during that time, some kind of fear may arise inside us to to cross cross some some level inside us. No? And that fear especially will will amplify when we know that I don't know when I'm going to meet again in this meeting. No. But when we know that tomorrow I'm going to meet anyway. So we, we, we become relaxed about it. Fear is never true, by the way. So it's not that there's actually something wrong happens to anybody or can happen to anybody by exploring the truth or living the truth. But just the fear. No. So that fear also subsides. We relax that, okay, if I'm not able to understand something, Tomorrow I can come again, no? and that makes us so relax, more relaxed than usual. So then, when the fear does not arise, we become more open in a way. Instably, we are able to connect that yes, it is possible. Really, what is what, what is the big deal that I just sense more experientially that I am, that I exist, than thinking about it. It is possible, you, you know, like this. It's a very uh, so this is also one, one benefit I noticed happens. That we become more confident somehow because of the continuity. It's not an isolated event uh, happening. You know? So definitely because of the uh, commitment and the continuity, uh, it has its own rewards. Rachi, the retreat is called Dhyan and Satsang retreat. Um, can you say a little more about this beautiful conf um, combination of Dhyan and Satsang? And um, maybe what what are we getting out of it? Like what is what is at the end of five days? Yes, yes. Um, dhyan, as I said, is a, is a understanding that 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 I share, the understanding which has to be practiced. The understanding contains a sort of a instruction which is repeated and refined after discussion uh, several times, and we come to a clear understanding of uh, <clears throat> what we are doing, and we learn not to do that, and we learn to remain without doing anything. You know. So that is basically the fundamental understanding of dhyan, that how to remain without doing anything, while we can tend to continue doing something or the other. And we are facilitated um, in, in the retreat continuously in so many ways actually, not only through walking together in a guided meditations, 
but also having a possibility of discussion that okay during this guiding this happened what to do now or yesterday after the guiding after i was fine but then afterward something felt like this and so now there is a little confusion and things like this no but in general dhyan basically is that area of effort in a way you know although we are trying to come to effortlessness but through effort it's like using mind to be free from mind using effort to be free from the tense of doership you know in one sense you can say but still there is the effort here however satsang is not really uh, some kind of technique given to us which we can practice at home and improve upon that slowly no satsang is the technique in itself being used by life by the be- one being of life in the moment you know so satsang in, in itself is a spontaneous uh, technique being used by the source of life so here the possibilities are much more immediate you know like we have practiced dhyan we have understood dhyan up to some degree and we have succeeded in that in that because the more we understand the more we succeed obviously no? because it is just about understanding no? understanding and practicing the understanding so as soon as we understand better we are able to practice better and we are able to succeed so we succeed in dhyan like this and yet somehow uh, as if the pull towards the mind is much more meaning pull towards doing is still much more you no know, when we do it alone no? the pull towards doing is so much more that we hardly sometimes succeed in touching that point where we are but not doing anything in satsang the exact opposite happens the support or pull towards being is much much more and the power of mind and pull towards mind is much much less the exact opposite so for those people who want to succeed in dhyan satsang is a perfect place for that and everybody would like to succeed in dhyan no every seeker of truth because there is no other way there is no other thing that we can do except come to the being that we are no? we don't have to seek anything we have, we have to just find ourselves so dhyan is a way to find ourselves which is where we are trying to practice on our own satsang is the same thing where we have a support of our togetherness of the presence of the being of life we are the power of mind or the pull towards doership or doings habit of doing is much less support of uh, remaining in the uh, non doing state no inactive state of being true state of being is much more so this is how we advance in a way that uh, this is how we progress in dhyan and satsang you know and the satsang is also um, a retreat is also for for advanced seekers of truth also where i find in in our Uh, retreats uh, many advanced seekers are also present who have already uh, succeeded in dhyan and who are also very well succeeding in satsang now so there is no problem in in them that they are not able to stay as the being outside of satsang or inside the satsang you know and yet now the time comes for them to have those genuine confusions which are not arising out of restlessness or sense of suffering but more arising within the joyfulness of the being now to so they are joyfully living as themselves and yet they have genuine confusions which another being who has been on the on the same path can help them a lot no not only by discussion but by by just being together also in silence many confusions are resolved very simply within ourselves without talking also without discussing also so for the advanced seekers also and dhyan and satsang retreat is actually very very useful because their starting point will already be the being that i am able to stay as the being now and these are some of my advanced confusions in the sense that i am not able to uh, feel for example myself clearly as i do feel myself alone when i'm sitting uh, when i'm in the market or somewhere like that. when i am working when i am in the office or pract- connecting to practical life i am not able to clearly feel myself during that time something like this maybe because here in satsang the very being of life the source of life is delivering 
So there is no limit to to the possibility of questions and answers. The more present we are, the more we can benefit. You know, like this. And uh, there is such a beauty of uh, uh, interaction with the with the advanced seekers also, because they are not seeking for answers in time now. They are seeking for answer in this very moment. And satsang is a perfect place for for that because satsang uh, has a you know the speciality. One of the speciality of satsang is immediacy of exploration of truth in this very moment. It doesn't ask for time. It only asks for our attention and presence in the moment in satsang. Then everything can be known or explored in this very moment. Maybe we will not be able to retain it, and that is a subject to be discussed. That why we are not able to retain. <laughs> but uh, we, for one moment, can truly know everything in this moment, whatever is our question. So advanced seekers are benefited because of this nature of satsang. The very nature of satsang enables us, or uh, you know, facilitates this. As we are talking now about the advanced seekers of truth, um, and some are not. They maybe just um, stumbled over one recording of you or heard about you. Personally, I feel the only prerequisite there is to join a satsang with you or retreat with you is being here in the present moment. Is this understanding correct? Oh, yes, yes, it is correct. Yeah, but for being here in this moment, it may take some something. I would not like to define that as a prerequisite, because it is very subjective between all the beings. Like, we all are, it is possible for all of us to be present in the same truth, that is, being present in Sasana. But we, not we all are lost in different dream, dreams. Uh, you know, we are not lost in same same dream. We are lost in different dreams called our own story in the mind and thoughts and daydreaming and everything. No? So because of everyone's dreams are different, although our truth or awakened state uh, where we come to is the same place, same being. Because of that, it is very subjective that why we will not be here. And for that, we can do something. But yes, it is true that all it takes to um, be benefited by uh, by dhyana and satsang retreat is the ability to be present, you know? and not really preoccupied by the spiritual idea so much. You know? That this is this is this and this is that. Like, if we have a little bit of a openness to learn something new, or learn the same thing in the new way, or or looking at the same thing from fresh eyes. You know? Then we can be so much benefit, like it can op can be an eye opener for us. Because what we are searching for generally as a seeker of truth, we are never going to find that because that doesn't exist. And what exists, we are not looking at that. You know, that is the dilemma of a seeker of truth. That every seeker of truth has to fail to succeed. You know, the sooner we fail, the better, so that the rest of the life can be lived in the joy in the you know, heaven of the being that we are, the truth that we are. And by being more present in, in, in the Dhyana and Satsang retreat, we can more quickly see our mistake. And we, we can save ourselves from miserably failing. We can wisely fail now. <laughs> like accept that, no, my direction is wrong, or, or there is no path there which I imagine to be, to exist. No? So in that way, yes. That's all it requires. Like, especially what I share, I don't say to anybody that what you should achieve in life. I don't give advice to anyone, absolutely at all. I don't even indirectly try to, you know, persuade somebody that you should wake up and get enlightened or something. No, just one thing that we can be so very happy, so very joyful, so very integrated and undivided in the being that we can, our life can be wonderful. And it is possible for everyone. Yeah. 
and for that just being present in satsang and trying to connect to what is being shared allowing uh, in the in the openness to understand this is more than enough satsang is not going to give us a direction it never gives us a direction it uh, gives us a environment where we grow to our possibilities to our potential higher potentials not the personal potential that i will become more strong person or better art- articulated person no somehow something higher than the person start waking up in us in a way or uh, those possibilities start you know opening up inside us Raji, thank you so much for the support in clarification certain things right now and in your support sharing your satsangs in your retreats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.